I'm here today with Chelsea Entwistle, the lady who has the, the official Salford Precinct artist. Artist in residence, they've named me. It's very fancy. It's a posh title, isn't it? It is when Mike says it, he says it in a very fancy voice. Well, you see, he's not from <laughs> Salford, is he? <laughs> Tell us about this artwork you're doing. So I'm live painting the event today. Um, everyone that's been in, I've noticed you've not had a go yet, so we can get that done while we're stood here as well. Um, I'm making sure everyone has a go. Um, so at the end of it, even Mike's had a go, and 100% of the proceeds are going to be um, wherever you want to go for it. 100% of the proceeds will go to Salford's Loaves and Fishes from the sale of the painting. There we go. So everyone's everyone's having a go. Right. Um, so yeah, it's just the live painting of the event. Obviously, it's something we've not seen for a while. An outdoor broadcast from BBC. It's nice to see the centre getting used for something positive. Um, yeah. So it's been fantastic to be included. What is going to, the artwork? Is going to be auctioned for charity? Yeah. So a hundred percent of the proceeds are going to be given to Salford Loaves and Fishes. Okay. Um, that was just purely chosen because I've, obviously I know Jenny through um, the internet anyway. She's amazing what she does for Salford, and with it being here today, as it seemed just to be the right charity to work alongside with. Do you know what I mean? They do so much fantastic, and I didn't just want to take it home. And I think if we're going to sell it, then we might as well try and make a bit of money from it. Of course. Um, but yeah, a hundred percent of the proceeds will be going to Salford. With loaves and fishes. I've seen your artwork before uh, exhibited. You're going from strength to strength. Oh, to say, I think so. It's I going, but so. it's going quite fast as well. I think when we're being pregnant, it's just sort of flying by as well. Oh, I'm going to mention the bump. <laughs> yeah, it just, yeah, it's just there. But yeah, I've been so lucky um, since obviously I exhibited first at the Cornerstone, um, and really it all comes down from Sean. Um, I'm going to end up wiping paint all over my face. It all comes down from Sean, who does the PR for the precinct, who officially asked me just to do one commission for the 50th if you'd been watching me online for ages and i would said joking before i went to the meeting about artists in residence because obviously we all it sounds fancy and when he said it we just burst out laughing and it has literally just gone from so it started as a joke and it has literally just gone from there and um, as well as doing the one big commission piece they've also given me the other window to display as much artwork as i want for the rest of the year and um, so that's all in there as well which has been amazing I was going to call her the resident war artist, but I don't know what I'm going to say. Honestly, I think the art was really, really good. We're not impressed with it. See, I first saw it at Cornerstone yeah. a while back in the exhibition. And I'm glad you see you from strength to strength. More yes. importantly, you're from Salford, yeah. keeping the Salford tradition going. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, to be honest, until I started, I've always painted abstract, but you should, uh, I've always done it at home until I met Tony and I did it from the Art of Salford. That was the first time I'd ever exhibited. Um, and Tony's obviously been here today. Tony's had a go as well. Um, so it's been it has been amazing to meet so many people that are from Salford that are doing the exact same thing that are painting and documenting Salford the history of Salford because I think it's one of them things until I joined the group until I met Tony I didn't realise how many like Michelle with the poetry I didn't realise how many people out there were creative in Salford and obviously I've met Kevin as well and everyone just seems to have all these hidden skills and obviously we've got Adele here today as well. Adele's been from, from the Art of Salford as well. Say hi Adele. Hi. And so hopefully, um, like I said, I've been given the window till the end of the year until the shop's up and I am trying to uh, get through to Sean that this is not going to be the end of the artist in residence. Hopefully next year we'll have number two and I've got Adele lined up for that one. Fingers crossed we can get Adele in there. But Shops it, for the girls. It's been, yeah, we'll get the girls in there first. It's just been nice to be involved in something where, obviously, you know yourself, we don't always have the best reputation coming from Salford. And to have something that's more positive and shine a bit of a nicer light, it's been fantastic to be included in. Well, you're doing a great job of it. Thank you. So, uh, when you're dead rich and famous, will you oh, still on to us? I don't think I'll ever be that rich and famous. Well, well I'm still living in Mike Sweeney's old house. House, which he keeps reminding everyone. Yeah, so it was the first first house he ever bought. Well, he keeps he keeps telling everyone at radio that it's his old house. So I'm going to put a plaque up and I said I'm going to start charging for Mike Sweeney's house tours. But yeah, it's been amazing. I, well, I said that to him. I said now he's telling everyone. Everyone's going to know where he lives. But apparently, he's owned that many houses in Salford. It could be any of them. So yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it's been nice to be included in a big community event like this. It's been really good. Great. Glad you're doing it, Chuck. Thank you. Thanks for speaking to Chuck. Oh, it's all right. Thank you so much. Rounding up our series of talks today at Salford Precincts, I'm joined by Max Weiner. Mike, what's it like coming back to Salford and chatting with the... Not been on the precinct for ages. Uh, it was really interesting. And I got off the train at Salford Crescent yeah. and walked through the precinct. So I've not walked through the precinct for decades. I mean, I've driven through it and I did yeah. some filming here uh, a bit ago. But it's lovely to be... It's always going to be home, you know. Yeah. Um, I was brought up in Oddsall. I lived in Salford till I was 40-odd. So it's always home. And when I come back, yeah. uh, I feel very much this is where I've... Belong. Yeah, but it's part of my DNA. But what is really important is that the BBC come to places like this. Mm. We're in Media City, uh, and, and Radio Manchester's for Greater Manchester, and we should be places like this, and Little Holton, and Ancoat, and Rochdale, yeah. and Wigan, you know, and Berry. We should be out and about in the community uh, and not always when the sun's shining and not always somewhere that's uh, really, really pleasant and green and leafy. It's, you should be out in the communities that we should, we're here to serve these communities because they pay my wages, mm. pay all our wages. Have you been touched by the stories you've been told today? What's... Of poverty that well, we're facing in Salford. What's really interesting and in a way quite poignant is the stories could have been told in the 70s uh, when we had really dreadful financial situation, inflation at 20 odd percent. When I was a kid back in the 50s and 60s, uh, you could work and be poor. My dad worked 45 hour a week in initially when I was a kid. We were always poor. We never had enough money. Um, and I find it it's, it's sad that it's 2022 and that people are having to choose whether to have the house warm or to have some food, you know. What I found encouraging, encouraging is that they call it the spirit of Salford. When times are hard, you find out who good people are. And the people of Salford are donating so much to food banks, clothing, advice, helping people. I find that really encouraging. And so do I when you go into, say, Salford Loaves and Fishes. Mm. And you look at what they do. When I did my my piece there, I did a little documentary piece, and I went in the door and I said, I walked into this bright, warm room that smelled of cooking. And you can imagine somebody. And I, I I'd, I'd had a bit of breakfast, and and I was I, I'd got out of, a, out of a warm car, and I could imagine somebody going in there that wasn't warm, and that, and that was hungry. And to go in there and feel wanted and feel supported and feel that there are people there to help. Yeah. And that maybe is indicative of Salford and what we can do with organisations, but also as individuals. Yeah. People have pulled together. It's going to be hard. It's going to get worse. We all know that. But for me, people of Salford will see us through this. We will. We'll get through it. And, you know, it's, it's hard. I always say that I wouldn't be who I am without having been brought up in Salford. Correct. What is your role today, Charmina? So I'm here to talk about all the support that the council has in place for people who are suffering hardship at the moment due to the cost of living crisis. So I had a brief chat about that. Here to have a brief chat with you about it as well. That's good, yeah. yeah. Never choose Manchester Radio, BBC, whatever they're called, over Salford Media. Well, you're quite a wise choice. So have we got anybody here today else giving advice on poverty, I, I hate the word poverty, but sadly I think we're heading that way, isn't it? Yeah, um, we have Loaves and Fishes here, we've got uh, Citizens Advice here, we've got a range of people to give advice out, but you can also just give the council a call, the Spirit of Salford Helpline is, yeah. is still running, um, and there's a wide range of advice available there, not just advice, support, practical support as well. Do you honestly, well I, I honestly think things are going to get worse, aren't they? That's, the, that's what the project that's what they're projecting mm. from government and we can't see that it is going to get any better with um, the government, with the plans that they've got ahead. They've got plans to solve the crisis by slashing public services. Um, how that helps people who are actually going through hardship, I don't know. Mm. Today, does it close at two o'clock? I know we, we got a little bit late, I do know that. But if people will be watching, can they still come down and get advice or... 
where would you advise them to go if not here today, obviously? If not here, you can turn up to any of your local gateways. Um, there's support available from our Better Off team there, Salford Assist there as well. Or you can get on the phone. Uh, or there's a website, salford.gov.uk slash cost of living. Right. Um, and there's, it's like a little encyclopedia on there. You tell that website what's wrong and it'll tell you all the different support that's available. But if you need it face-to-face, -face, go to a gateway. Yep. Uh, if you want it over the phone, you can do or you can go online.